So let's bring in John McMullen and talk a little odds as uh, Bet Online releases its odds on the chance NFL teams to have to make the playoffs. All right, so we'll talk about the different teams and their percentage chance. We'll get John's opinion on whether he sees them as a playoff team and whether they bring good value as a playoff team here. Because these are just odds to make the playoffs. These aren't to win the Super Bowl. Right, just get in. Just get in. All right. So let's start with a couple of here for John McMullen here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3. He, like all guests, appears via the boardwalk on the hotline. Johnny Mac, what's going on, my friend? How are you guys? Doing well. We are well. We are well, man. Steps from the beach. You're doing better than me. (laughs) Uh, All right. uh, So these are our odds to make the NFL playoffs this year. So we're going to throw these teams down at you. You kind of – I'm interested to get your take because we're trying to, you know, educate the listeners on which teams are playoff caliber teams this year. And then they have all – once you get in, you have a shot to maybe make a deep run. So uh, odds say for Arizona uh, this year – Plus 900. They have a 9% chance. Do we look at Murray getting that team in? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, they're at the bottom uh, of any list, and that's not a shot at Kyler Murray. There's a reason you're the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. You're generally joining really bad teams. And not only are the Cardinals a really bad team, they're making a ton of changes, and, and they made a change, obviously, at head coach as well. And it, it remains to be seen uh, whether Cliff Kingsbury can get things going with Kyler Murray. He's certainly been given every opportunity. That's the quarterback he wanted. Uh, that's the way they're going to go. Uh, we've talked about it uh, some in the past. I didn't necessarily agree with it after taking Josh Rosen. Uh, as a top 10 pick, but nonetheless, that's where they are. I think ultimately, if you're looking at the Arizona Cardinals, you hope uh, that they can get get going in the right direction this year and then maybe year two uh, be in the wild card conversation. Then if everything uh, falls directly in place, year three, uh, a more legitimate contender. But I I think that team's a, a ways off. All right, the next team. Now, this one's interesting. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, they have a 36% chance, plus 160. Now, Atlanta's interesting. I mean, you got Matt Ryan, so you got in. You put money down on Atlanta to be a playoff team. To be a playoff team, yeah. I, I, I think they'll certainly be in that conversation. And anytime you have a quarterback as accomplished as Matt Ryan, you have an opportunity. And I think you look at the NFC South, and generally it's been a a three-horse race back and forth. I think it's clear New Orleans uh, is the best team. Uh, And then you have Carolina and Atlanta. If anything, I think the Panthers have taken a bit of a step back. So I I do think you look at Atlanta now as the second-best team in that division, and that means they're probably going to be in the wild-card conversation. So there's some decent, decent value with that team. All right, uh, John McMullen, these are odds to make just make the playoffs. You can win some money on just making the playoffs. So uh, Atlanta, 36% chance, plus 160. Yes. All right, Baltimore, 34.8% chance. They're at plus 175, minus 115. Yes, 175, no, 215. Is Baltimore a playoff team? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're very similar to what we just said with Atlanta. There's a little bit of a, a, a sea change in the AFC North. I mean, typically you think Pittsburgh and Baltimore right off the bat. Now it's pretty evident that Cleveland has all of a sudden uh, come, and it's weird to say it, but uh, at least talent-wise, they might be the most talented team in that division, one through 53, when all is said and done, and we're in September and the rosters start, but It's an unproven group. Uh, So there's no guarantee Cleveland's going to win that division. I mean, you still have to learn to win. We've seen it time and time again with young teams. Uh, So I still think they're going to have some hiccups. Uh, And then you see all the issues with Pittsburgh uh, and and no more, not only Antonio Brown, but Le'Veon Bell, uh, still a solid team. So I, I think you look at it as a legitimate uh, three-team division with Cincinnati, the one team that's probably not going to be in the mix. And Baltimore's well-coached. It's a good organization. Uh, I do have concern over the quarterback and, and how quickly he can make, take that next step because 
I don't think you can win consistently running the football like they did in the second half of last season. I think the game has just changed so much. So there is some concern, but they'll be in the conversation. Talking uh, odds of making the NFL playoffs. These just came out. These are fun. It's a chance for you to get in now and get some good odds. Buffalo plus 400. 18.9% 18.9% chance, minus 600, no, plus 400, yes. McDermott going into his third year. Uh, they made the playoffs his first year, but they say there's less than a 20% chance this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the best case for them is the bad division outside New England. Uh, and say, you got any value it. there, plus 400, you a little value. Yeah, and, and there is because if you look at who's the second best team in that division, well, it's clearly not Miami. I mean, they're in the conversation to be the worst team in football. Uh, so then you start talking about New York Jets versus Buffalo, and you see all the change in New York. We just mentioned it uh, with Arizona. You have a new head coach in Adam Gase. He's been unsuccessful in that very same division. Joe Douglas just moved up there, uh, hasn't had time and, and won't have time to put his imprint on the team uh, because of the late hire. Uh, but they do have some young, uh, talented pieces, the Jets, and it starts with the quarterback. But also, if you look at straight up the middle on defense, they are really, really good and really, really talented. So hmm. I think Buffalo will be battling them to be the second-best team in that division, uh, and that might offer some value to get that second wild-card spot. But if you're looking at the talent level of the team, probably not there yet. And I think a lot of it depends on how much you like the quarterback. I, I don't necessarily – I'd bet on Sam Darnold before I bet on, on, on Josh Allen in Buffalo. Yeah. We've got uh, – we'll get to the Jets in, in Miami. We'll, we'll take a look at all these teams here um, as we go down. Uh, Carolina – is 29% chance. They got Cam Newton back, plus 225, yes, minus 285, no. Cam Newton uh, coming off the injury, though, so they should be kind of interesting. Yeah, and I mentioned, I kind of mentioned them with Atlanta. I, I mean, it, you figured New Orleans is the best team uh, in that division, uh, and then you kind of lobby back and forth, and that's how it has been. Uh, Carolina, Atlanta, it, it probably depends on something. Uh, like injuries, who, who's the healthier team? Who gets through it better? Uh, and they'll be in that playoff hunt. The other one, probably not. Uh, so they're very close. They've been very close. That's been a very competitive division uh, for a number of years now. Uh, and, and Carolina's right in there. But I think, I think the odds makers got it right. If you're telling me which way do you lean, I think you have to lean Atlanta over Carolina. John, when you look at the Chicago Bears, you know I think they're an interesting team. Last year, are they for real, or is that just a fluke? I, it seems like they're going to be hanging around. They have them listed to make the playoffs minus 140, no plus 110. So they're saying they're most likely going to make it. How do you view the Chicago Bears this year? 55% chance, uh, it says. 55%. Well, I, I think they're they're a good young team uh, emerging in the right direction. I still have questions with their quarterback situation. The biggest issue for me from Chicago's standpoint is the first-place schedule. We see it every year in this league. Last year they made the big leap playing a last-place schedule, and that's how you do it. That's why you have worst to first in this league. And then it becomes much more difficult because now they have the first-place schedule. So right off the bat, they could be a better team. You can almost guarantee they're going to have a, a worse record, and they could still be better. Uh, for the division as a whole, uh, I think Green Bay has taken a massive step back from a talent standpoint, so I think the only team you have to worry about is Minnesota. Uh, they've done some things to correct their issues on the offensive line, but we still have to see how that works out. Uh, so I do think the Bears are going to be one or two in that division, uh, but the schedule, it's going to make it much more difficult. The Cincinnati Bengals, John, now they're, they're more of a long shot, a 13.6% chance, yes, plus 600. So if you're saying there's a chance and you take plus 600, 
pretty good payout there. No, Sounds minus like they 1,000. Sounds going to be one of the worst teams in the league. It certainly does. So, John, what, yeah. what are your thoughts there? Well, you have a new head coach, Zach Taylor, uh, coming in. Uh, and that's obviously that's been a long time uh, since they've had new blood in the in the coaching uh, ranks with Marvin Lewis and who was there for so long. Uh, it's still Andy Dalton's show uh, at the quarterback position, um, and I, I don't think that's the way Zach Taylor wants to go long term. So I, I do think this is a situation where they're in a rebuild. And when we talk about rebuilds in the NFL, it's not like the NBA or anything like that. You can do it rather quickly. Uh, but I, I do think it's going to be two years or so at least uh, to get them going back in the right direction. And you always have to look at the division, as I've mentioned. And in that division, it's pretty clear that they're the worst team. So that's that's not a good recipe for being a potential playoff team. All right, the Cleveland Browns, they're many uh, people's Super Bowl pick. They're they're the hottest topic here in the Could summer. A lot of mortgages <laughs> lost on this team. Lost or won on this team. Right, lost or won. So Baker Mayfield, let's see how he does this year. All of his new toys, a 55.1% chance they're giving the Cleveland Browns to make the playoffs. Yes, minus 140. No, plus 110. Talk about all the hype surrounding the Cleveland Browns. Well, it is hype and it, and until it develops into something more uh, substantive than that. That's all you can call it. And I think it, it, it really correlates to not only Baker Mayfield, but bringing in somebody like Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, and I just point to the Giants. I mean, the Giants had OBJ, but they had uh, other issues, and, and they weren't a good team with them. So I think people get – excited about really, really talented players and kind of over overrate it in what is ultimately the biggest team sport there is, at least in this country from a professional landscape standpoint. So I, I do think they're overhyped, but I do think it's also fair to say, as I said before, they're probably the most talented team in that division. Uh, and John Dorsey's in there. He's making good decisions. He's bringing in talent. And when he keeps stacking good decisions up, good things are ultimately going to happen. I don't think they're going to the Super Bowl this year. Uh, but I do think this is potentially the first step to that. And maybe they do end the playoff drought. Uh, I think that's a legitimate conversation. That should probably be the goal. John McMullen uh, looking at the uh... – uh, odds of making the NFL playoffs. I'm liking this because uh, we got Dallas on the list now. So Dallas is interesting. Plus 100, yes. Minus 130, no. They got a 46.9% chance, according to Vegas, to be a playoff team this year. Now, of course, they are the defending uh, division champions. Yeah, and they're right there with the Eagles. I, I think the NFC East is, is pretty clearly a two-team division. Two good teams, two bad teams. Uh, and I think that's the way ultimately it will shake out. So uh, that makes it uh, pretty clear that they're going to be in a conversation to be a playoff team again. I think that's fair. But there are certain teams, and we all know it, and, and Dallas is one in the NFL. You look at other sports. Lakers just made a big move in the NBA, and now they're going to have a ton of hype. Yankees in baseball, those are the types of teams – that even when they're good, people think they're a little bit better than they really are. Notre Dame in college football is another one. Uh, that's the Cowboys. You're never right. going to get good value with the Cowboys. That's how I say it. They're a good team, uh, but they're always going to be overvalued. Let's go to Denver. Plus 350 to be a playoff team. 21% chance. Minus 500. No. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be difficult for them. Uh, in a division where Kansas City's still really good. The Chargers may be the most talented team in the AFC. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but they're really, really good from a talent perspective. Uh, and the Broncos have obviously brought in a new head coach, and Vic Fangio's coming over from Chicago. So you think uh, the defense is going to be solid because they still have talent. You talk about Von Miller and Bradley Chubb and 
uh, players like that. But offensively, Joe Flacco is the starter. Uh, and Drew Locke is sort of being groomed as a second-round pick. Right. I think they're going to struggle offensively, and that's not a good division uh, to be in to make a playoff push. So I would say that would be trending in a negative direction. The Detroit Lions, John, 18.9% chance. Not looking very good for Detroit. Hmm. See, that's Somebody a little was saying bit the lower. other day they liked them as a dark a sleeper. I mean, guess what? I, I don't disagree with that. For You're the in odd, on them as For a the sleeper. odds, okay. yes. Plus 400. I'll lose some cash on the Detroit Throw it Lions. Down. Why not? What do you think, John? Well, there, it was a really bad situation last season with Matt Patricia in his first year. Maybe he gets it going in the right direction. We just mentioned Minnesota, Chicago. They're the best teams in that division. Green Bay's taking a step back, but they still have Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers can get you a win uh, pretty much any week if he's healthy. And so that's what the Lions are looking at. Uh, I, I think most people look at them as the fourth best team in that division. Maybe it's not fair. Probably the third best team from a talent perspective. Um, but as Matthew Stafford, as good as he is, and I think if anything, he's been underrated over the years because he hasn't had great supporting cast. He's not Aaron Rodgers. So I don't know. Give me a path to the playoffs for the Detroit Lions. That That looks like a <laughs> difficult one for me. Well, it's interesting because you said Green Bay. I thought you you said earlier you thought they were a little overhyped, right? That they're going to take yeah, a step back, and, 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 and they're they at made... fifty. They're at fifty-two percent to get in, minus one twenty-five. Well, that's about one guy, and and yep. rightfully so. I, I mean, people still look at Aaron Rodgers as, as a guy who is going to win games by himself. Uh, it, it's been. Uh, more of a struggle over the past year and a half. Now they're changing coaches. You already hear some of those, that noted Rodgers' passive aggressiveness. He's already happy, but unhappy at least about getting some autonomy taken away. So I, I think things could go in that negative direction rather quickly in Green Bay. I don't think there's a good supporting cast. I think they've overachieved because they've had such a great quarterback. Uh, for the past really five, even more than that, five to seven years. So I, I never – look, if you have a healthy Aaron Rodgers, you've got a puncher's chance to win any game. Uh, so people are going to default to that. But if you look at that Green Bay team, if you look at the rest of the roster, he got some issues there. And, and they've had some issues for a while. Yeah, the Houston Texans, John, is next up on the list. And they're always – Such an interesting team. Yeah, they really are because they're an unknown. Some years you think they, they're going to do something special or they surprise you or they – you know, in a good way or a bad way. They have them as a 38% chance to make the playoffs, plus 150, yes, minus 180, no. So they're saying it's unlikely that the Houston Texans will be in the postseason. Well, I don't think people realize – at least on the East Coast, that's a really competitive division. Uh, and, and none of the teams get a lot of hype. But if you look at you can make a, a case for everybody. Indianapolis with Frank Reich and, and what, what his great rookie season was there. Everybody thinks they're trending up. Jacksonville had a bad season. Now they have Nick Foles, though. Uh, it, it's... It's not Blake Bortles, and they still have all that talent on the defensive side of the football. So who knows? Maybe they can have a bounce back here. And Tennessee is not a great team, but they're a good team. And they've been in that 9-10 win bracket, and they could be again. Uh, and, and then you have Houston, who's also been there. Houston's big issue is their offensive line. And there's a bunch of good teams in this league, Seattle, we just mentioned Minnesota. Houston's in that category. If they can fix their offensive line problems, they could be a really good team. But that's a big if. And remember what the Eagles did on draft night. Traded up uh, past Houston uh, to get Andre Dillard because they knew the Texans were going to take him. That's how desperate they were. They needed an offensive lineman. And then they panicked and took Titus Howard. Uh, right after. I don't think he's ready to play. 
That's the big Achilles heel of the Houston Texans. If they can fix it and just be average, they're going to be a playoff team. Yeah, and uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow uh, with some of these other very intriguing uh, teams. You just mentioned Indianapolis. We'll pick up with them tomorrow. The percentage for them is very interesting, uh, and these are uh, the odds of making the NFL playoffs. We'll have some fun with these uh, the next couple of days. John McMullen at JF McMullen. By the way, good uh, article. I think it was, what, MMQB about Joe Douglas, some of the things he had to say, John, uh, regarding the Eagles on his way out the door in terms of he thinks this is – uh, much like what Zach Ertz said, he thinks this is the deepest, uh, b- deeper Eagles team than the year that won the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I think that's fair, but you also have to be ca- cautionary. Yeah, we a lot of us thought that last year, thought the team was deeper on paper uh, than the Super Bowl team. So it's been this way for about three years now. Uh, depends where the injuries are, where they hit. We all know they hit really hard. The defensive backfield last season was tough to overcome. Here, I I think the issue, and we've mentioned it last week on the show, no Nick Foles. He's in Jacksonville, as we just talked about. So as deep as this team is at most positions, they're no longer deep at the most important position. So Carson Wentz has got to stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, all right, good stuff, John. And, of course, uh, football at 4 returns tomorrow right here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Thanks, pal. Hey, thank you, guys.